Hey everybody, welcome to our next video on kinetics. I thought I'd just play a little music to make sure you're uh, paying attention and you're ready to go. Uh, if you know that song, be the first student to email me with the name and the group of that song and you'll get an A for the trimester. Okay, so let's talk about um, more integrated rate laws. In this video, we're going to go over the details for second and zeroth order integrated rate laws. And then in the next video, we'll go through uh, a, a summary of all the different integrated rate laws and all their different equations um, to put a cap on everything. So second order rate law. So again, we're still working with the limited condition that we only have one reagent, namely A, going on to form products. And so, if it's a second order reaction, remember we're going to know the order as we do these integrated rate laws. If it's a second order reaction, then the rate is equal to the loss of A is equal to K times to the uh, K, K times A squared, excuse me. So A is now second order. Now I'm not going to go through the calculus. If you want to study the calculus, if you want to copy all this fun stuff down, go ahead and pause the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the conclusion here. The result of the calculus gives us what we can see here in the box. And that is, if I know um, the initial concentration of my reactant, and I know how long the reaction's been going for, and I know the rate constant, I can figure out how much A is going to be left over under, again, second order conditions. So this equation in this box only applies if the differential rate law, this part here, behaves with second order, okay? So that's the integrated result for second order rate laws. Let's take a look at details about second order rate laws. How about the half-life? So remember, half-life is the time it takes for the current concentration of the reactant to be equal to half of the initial concentration of the reactant. So we're going to do kind of what we did before with first order rate laws. I'm going to plug in A0 over 2 in for A into one of the results we got from second order half-life. When we do all that and we rearrange and we solve for T1 half, we eventually can see the stuff in the box here that the half-life is equal to 1 over K times A0. Now there's an important distinction here. First order half-life, I'm going to write it here for first order, it equaled the natural log of 2 over K. The second order half-life has a term that we didn't see in first order half-life, namely, it's dependent upon initial concentration. So, unlike first order half-life, unlike this equation, second order half-lives are not constant. For first order half-life to go from 100 to 50 percent is a half-life. 50 to 25 percent is another identical half-life. Here for second order half-lives, each consecutive half-life actually lengthens in time. So to go from 100 to 50 is the first half-life for second order. To go from 50 to 25 is actually a factor of two longer because the second half-life starts with an A0 that's half the first half-life. And so there's a factor of two lengthening in each consecutive half-life as we go from one to the next. The other thing you can do with these equations is take a look at this equation here for second order half-life. Rearrange this equation and write it like a y equals mx plus b, and you will see that you can get a straight line if you graph the reciprocal of concentration versus time. You'll get a straight line relationship. Okay, so you might want to rearrange this equation that I'm that I'm now pointing to here to see if you can get a straight line relationship and spend a little time figure it out. Does the straight line go down or does it go up? After you solve the algebra, you should be able to answer that. Zero with order half-life. So again, same kind of conditions. One reactant going on to form products. We now have a zero with order differential rate law. So the rate is equal to the loss of A with time is now equal to Ka to the zero. Zero with order. 
So again, here's a whole bunch of calculus. Pause it, write it down, follow it if you want. But our end result is here in the box. So if I know my initial concentration, I know how long the reactions have been going, I know the rate constant, I can tell you how much A will be uh, left at the end. And as before, this only applies to the particular condition we're talking about, and that is zero order rate law. So that gives me my equation there. Again, play with uh, these equations down here and see that if I graph the concentration of A versus time, and my reaction is zeroth order, I will get a straight line. I will get a straight line with, in this case, it's going to be a negative slope. So make sure you can understand how that works. So that's the uh, integrated rate law for zeroth order. That's the straight line for zeroth order. What's next? You got it. Half-life for zeroth order. So plug in the usual, um, the usual consequences. A0 over 2 for A because we are at the half-life. So go ahead and plug in A0 over, over 2 right there. Rearrange the algebra and you will see that you get this result here that the half-life is A0 over 2K. Now, compared going back again to say first order half-lifes where T1 half was natural log of 2 over K we can see here again that like second-order half-life, A0 makes an appearance. So consecutive half-lives are not constant for zeroth-order chemistry and for second-order chemistry, which contrasts it with first-order chemistry. All right, so what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to go ahead and create a summary of all of this information. And until then, enjoy the music. See if you know who this is.